got a better seat than I do. That thing's cushy. Is that a problem? Oh, well, deal with it. What? Okay. Set it up over there right there. That sounds oh, good to me. For sure. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, just if you need any, like, if it's not coming through clearly or something, just go eh, 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 or eh, eh, eh. Um, okay. Let's space out a little bit. You. Sit here. I'm, big, I'm here. I'm here, bro. Sit here. You don't want to be next to him? Whose is that? Me? It's mine. It's mine. This is your camera. It's oh, is me. that the Sony? Yeah, it's my little handy cam. Yeah. You never know what you need. But they're just kind of waiting, yeah. hanging out. We should talk for a bit. Are we going to run her? Yeah. We're going to joke around a little bit. Mic test, mic test, mic test. Mic. Test, 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 test. You gotta eat it. Everybody say test. Test! You did it the best. See? All right, so we're testing out the microphone right now. It's wonderful. Those guys have better seats than I do. Seriously, those <laughs> those couches look awesome. You want to see what we're up there for? Yeah, no, no. I think we Andy on, really. No, hey, no, no. Hey, Mike. Oh. No, get. No. What? You're going to split. the mic, Mike. No, Mike, I'm going to hand. Mike, it's a mic. Look, okay, Mike the mic is not on the mic right now. But this one is. All right. Oh, Mike. So... In a minute here, Hey Ocean's going to come out, and, and we're going to ask them some Hey Ocean questions. Yeah. We're not Hey Ocean, I swear. <laughs> I look, look, I've been told I look just like Ashley Ball, and I understand there's a resemblance. You're hopeless. <laughs> you just lost your your, your cred from the, cl the okay. <laughs> anyway. Ugh. Okay. Well, we'll see who comes uh, up then. That's fine. Asher, that's fine. Okay. So, okay, before we get started, I guess I'll just introduce myself because we just need a minute for uh, the last of the band to uh, assemble, and then they will join us for Q&A. Uh, my name is Final Draft. I'm with Everfree Network. And this here, I've hauled this poor guy up on stage. This here is Bajati. Bajati is one Hello. of the heads of Everfree Northwest. Hello. Now... I pulled this guy up on stage for the first time, apparently, I, which is inexplicable to me because he's been to so many conventions and helped out at a ton of them. If you saw him at Everfree Northwest last year, you're a liar because he was working behind the scenes so hard that he collapsed on a couch. <laughs> but anyway, um, I brought him up on stage here because he's probably the world's foremost expert on Hey Ocean. How many concerts of theirs have you been to? Uh, I just counted a few minutes ago. I think it's somewhere around seven or eight. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. So, what's up? Yeah, we're ready. Yeah. Pullman? Yeah, Pullman. I don't know if they're hanging. I don't know if they even show No. <laughs> this is not Unicorn. Look, what? I didn't hear what you said. It'd be great to have a water. No, you know what? Okay. We can leave it alone. Here you go. Does someone want to be my favorite person ever? and grab a water from the back and run it back up here. He's not kidding. You'll be his favorite person ever. Like, favorite person for at least two hours. There's two in the back. That's all I know of, right, really. We have bottles? Oh, oh, there's a bottle. Oh. Are there more? I'm curious, though. You're, you, sir, are a hero. You, I'm sorry. He, he, he won my favorite person award. Okay, so I, be I believe we've got at least two of them here. All right. Oh, we got them all? All right. Everybody, welcome to the stage. Hey, Ocean. <laughs> all right. On this panel today, to my left, we have Dave Beckingham. Also goes by Davo. True. 
Um, he is a guitarist in the band. I'm sure you play other things, really. You have to. I play the heart strings. Oh, that's... That just... That warmed my heart strings, sir. And next over, um, I don't know if anyone knows who this is, but uh, we have Ashley Ball. Hey. Yo. And, on the end, Dave Vertesi. <laughs> Dave V's got Hi. some fans. He is the bassist in this group. Ashley, of course, <laughs> lead singer, uh, jazz flutist. Um, flout, flout, oh, I, I apologize, flautist. You have other instruments, though. What's the, uh, the, the picky thing you play at the? Kalim the kalimba? That is a, a kalimba. A kalimba? That's it's one of my favorites. It's an African thumb piano. The glockenspiel right. is another one. Ooh, I dabble yep. in it. Classic. Although it was left in Chicago last time we were there. So oh, no. If you come across a glockenspiel in Chicago, let us know. So way back in the day, I interviewed you. And, uh, and during that interview, you claimed to not play many instruments. You're a terrible liar. <laughs> I, just, I just, like, dabble in things. I'm not, I don't play anything very well. That's also a lie. Uh, she is an amazing flautist, by Thanks, the way. Thanks, <laughs> But anyway. All right, and then Dave V, Dave Vertesi, you are the, we are gone? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? I thought you were a moderator, Mike. You know what I was doing? I was, I was so transfixed by the thought of her claiming not to be a flautist <laughs> that it distracted me. But anyway, okay, well, I guess our first question for you today is how did you guys form as a band? Where did you guys meet? How did you guys assemble? What is your origin story? The origin of Hey Ocean. Well, my, um, my parents put me in a pod just as their home planet was imploding. <laughs> Dave, Dave, uh, Dave trained himself after his parents' untimely death. And what about you? I don't know. I'm trying to think of another superhero right now. I, I, uh, Justice League. Who else is Justice? Wonder 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 what is it? What is her, What is Wonder Woman's deal anyway? She's like an Amazon, and she's like made of clay or something. It's like Cat Catwoman. That's a good one. Yeah, Catwoman. What even? How did Catwoman? She, Catwoman really? She really likes cats. That's your superpower. I'm actually terribly allergic to cats, so. Okay, well, t uh, okay, real so story. This is the real story of real how story. Asian came to it's be. It's way less cool than that story, though. <laughs> we, we were friends. We knew each other when we were in grade six. Our our older sisters tried to set us up um, together. I didn't understand what that really meant because I was just into like skateboarding and street hockey. Yeah. And then. Um. Yeah. Uh, and then we, uh, we. Uh, Went to summer camp together. There you go. And then we started playing music together when we were 19 in Victoria, living uh, on Vancouver Island. And then we met Dave Vertesi when we played a little show. And he was like, you guys need another guitar player? We were like, no. You want a bassist? He was like, yeah. uh, we were like, yeah. And he, was, he went out and bought a bass the next day and learned how to play <laughs> the bass. What a guy. What a guy. And the rest is kind of history, as they say. Yeah, we've had a bunch of different drummers over the, the years we've been together. And... Now we, ki we kill them we after ki yeah, we use they, them. They explode. Combust on stage. But uh, we, do, we do have uh, two, uh, two other members that are here, but they're not here. They're back at the hotel, probably tanning by the pool. Um, Johnny and, and they're, they're actually probably watching anim anime <laughs> in the hotel room. Um, anime. <laughs> anime. anime. <laughs> it's a great movie. Um, and yeah, one, one of them plays guitar and one of them plays the drums. And that's the f five of us all together. Hey, Ocean, know about it. So listening through your uh, entire music library, um, notice that you have a lot of different styles. Um, so we're kind of wondering where your inspirations lie. Well, I think for one, we can't really help but write about what uh, we know best. Um, we, we have a lot of songs that have to do with uh, the ocean. We live very close to it. Uh, I, I believe one, one summer I lived like 15 steps from the ocean. We're all, we're all well, except for Dave here, but the, the two of us are born and raised in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, Dave was born in 
S- some small town in England, London, England. I can't. I don't know. A small town called London. London. <laughs> small town <laughs> called <laughs> near London. I don't know. It's very small. Croydon, Croydon, right? Cro- Croydon, Surrey. It's technically it's like part of Surrey, but it's London. Um, but we we've a really good accent. You guys should ask him to do an accent. Yes, right? yes. We have a lot of styles musically, actually. <laughs> yes, quite. Um, but uh, we've uh, we've just been a band for like eight years basically. So when we started, we we were like really into like singer songwriters and and but I mean Dave had a really kind of big punk background and like was into like I don't know like uh, and but also his parents are really like lots of classical music. So he was like kind of well versed in that stuff. Yeah. And like as we've grown as a band for like eight years, we've. Um, our tastes have developed and stuff. I used to be into hip hop, then got out of it, then got back into it. Like we, we all I just used like to be really into musical theater. Like I was That's a big why. musical theater geek yeah. in high school. Still and is, beyond. I think. A little bit, yeah. Sing a song for us from a musical nope, theater. Nope, not you guys want to hear a song from nope, Ashley Ball? Not gonna do it. Some not sort gonna. of. You guys can hear a song, a song later. If later. You want. Yeah. On my Lucky own, pretending he's beside me. I really like Les Mis. I don't know if you guys know that. That's a good one. Uh, but yeah, I was pr- big into it. But so I, I, I have a bit of cheesy musical theater background to add to the, the cool coolness of our band. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, we, we draw influence from all sorts of things, like life experiences, dreams, our beautiful uh, natural surroundings, ocean mountains, road trips, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. No, in Vancouver in that area is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I was going to say, though, I noticed, especially in some of your earlier tracks, like in uh, Song About California, uh, well, he was mentioning, and this was off of his, but Bicycle, you guys have a really jazzy influence. Would you say that jazz music is a big part of where you're coming from? Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. Anyone who actually plays jazz, when, they, when anyone says that we're jazzy, gets kind of mad. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, but maybe if you don't usually listen to it... Uh, I can see why you'd say that. I, I definitely, um, we're all self-taught on our instruments, although we've taken, like, some of us have taken lessons here and there. And uh, when I was, I feel like I was maybe 15, 14, I did a, um, I did a bit of it like a jazz s- summer camp. <laughs> so I learned, I learned some jazz voicings there. And, and I grew up listening to it and, and lots of jazz. And um, so it's one of, many influences that are that are in there for sure it, and it sort of rears its head once in a while when it seems appropriate i think the same in the same way that you would see lots of other genres sort of just sort of peek it, uh, into the music just come into the music once in a while different songs highlight different yeah different genres that we're into or have been into or just getting into whether it's you know, more rootsy or folky, or because there's definitely some of that influence there. Or, yeah, we're getting really into like s- into like late '70s disco right now, <laughs> along with the rest of the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think it's there for sure. You definitely, I mean, it ma- it makes sense. I mean, it's maybe not purely jazz, but I mean, I'm thinking of a song like Fish, where you have like a lot of brass and written in some renditions of it, and you've got that syncopation going on. Um, I mean, it really has that feel to yeah. it. Yeah, I know that I definitely ha- draw vocal inspiration from a lot of kind of jazzy um, vocalists, Rosemary Clooney or um, Ed Ella Fitzgerald. You know, they I used to scat a lot in songs, <laughs> and then I stopped because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't cool anymore. <laughs> Um, but yeah, de- I think that's, uh, I mean, that's where I, my, my dad kind of introduced me to them uh, at a young age and I sort of try to, you know, emulate that sound, I, I think. So that might have to do, like my vocal, some of my vocal licks or whatever I do might seem sort of jazzy because I'm trying to rip off Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> Well, going off of that, we talked a little bit about you know some of your musical influences, and you mentioned that you were going to take uh, that, that you guys have been working with like that late seventies disco sound. But what are some like genres of music that you would consider experimenting with for say future albums or stuff that you might have messed around with behind the scenes? Electronic. Uh, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of an ever changing thing. I think actually the challenge for us is. <laughs> I want to say almost to not do that. <laughs> we we like like ev- we never like to have th- all, any song sound the same. Really, we like to sort of try and change it up. Um, and 
the challenge for us is always like how do we incorporate that into one sound so when people hear our band they don't every day song isn't like completely different and doesn't make any sense but um yeah i mean we've m we're experimenting more and more with electronic elements and but at the same time challenging ourselves to not do that too because it's really tempting to just produce a lot and do you know tons of electronic things and because that's what everyone's doing but then at the same time going well at the core of it you want to have a really good song so you should be able to just play it on a guitar or a piano and sing along with it and and have it be just as good there so i don't know otherwise like well we've been talking a lot about death metal right <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> well, so would you say then that when <laughs> done? <laughs> would <laughs> would you say then when you are you know composing a song, you're not necessarily coming at it thinking, okay, this is going to be a funky piece, or this is going to be a you know, uh, you know, a, a specific genre. You're just you're working at it more organically. Would you say like this is just what the piece is going to be, and if it happens to have these sounds to it, that just is yeah, the way it's it kind works. of all at the same time. You know, it's like the lyrics and the sound and everything is all happening all at once and so we might be working on something. There's a couple songs, like uh, one of the songs on our record called New Love. And we, like that, we tried so many <laughs> different genres of music. <laughs> like literally we sat in a room together being like, okay, now let's try the reggae version. Okay, now let's try like the like breakbeat version. Okay, now let's try this. And until we sort of settled on something that felt felt good. So that happens sometimes. I think a lot of us would would love like an EP of all those different versions. <laughs> Change, yeah. I mean, yeah. some of the songs take shape really quickly, and some of the songs like take a very long time to to form. Um, yeah, we've got a couple demos that are just like very, very different, <laughs> very different than the than the original. Change. Dave was just mentioning Change, which is now kind of sort of this retro. Uh, song it was originally like super rock and we'd been listening to like the new Phoenix record at the time and like so the demo for that is like night and day yeah I've noticed a lot of the songs that you guys have recorded on the album versus having like an acoustic track or playing live kind of completely different sounds to them and I'm sure that especially the live ones probably evolve over time as you get new shows and stuff um, so I was kind of uh, wondering which of the songs did you not expect uh, to like or maybe come out not as you thought when you uh, gave it a live setting later on? Which, sorry, which uh, of the songs did we not expect to like? Um, well, kind of uh, when you bring stuff from an, al uh, an album track mm -hmm. to a live setting, the song oh changes yeah. significantly, so in what yeah. ways? Uh, yeah, we were actually saying earlier, to, um, sometimes you kind of learn what a song is going to be in the studio and you, you create it there. Um, you know, you've written it before and you get into the studio and you try new things and it kind of takes a new shape. <coughs> and other times you record a song kind of the way you wrote it and the way you settled on it and then you play it live a bunch and it it kind of evolves. And uh, that happens to most songs after the fact, after you've recorded it and you start playing it live, it starts to evolve. And I guess um, we're, really, we're really stoked on our live version of of new love, we love the recording, but it's kind of it kind of built this like intensity live that's really cool. Um, yeah, it just ha it songs just tend to change over time for sure. So oh yeah, and it, it keeps us interested because you know when we're touring and we're playing the same show or or, or different the same the same sort of group of songs every night for like you know two hundred nights in the year, mm -hmm. it keeps it interesting for us to change sort of change the way we attack it. Oh for sure, yeah, and that's how music used to be played before you could record it. Every time you play a live performance, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Like there's solos that change up. You maybe go back to the riffs differently, and yeah, new love especially is uh, one of my favorites live. Another one would be uh, if I were a ship as well. Um, but I guess that wasn't live, right? It, that was like what Dave was saying. It's like the it happens. Sometimes it's in the studio, and sometimes it's live, and sometimes it's a combination of both. Wh where we did like if I were a ship, and it was the demo is just Ashley playing it on that. African thumb piano, the kalimba. And we were kind of like, well, maybe it just makes sense to just leave this as it is because it's really beautiful. You know, it's it's a really beautiful moment. And then Ash was like, no, I want I want to 
spice it up. <laughs> so we literally went into, we recorded her playing the kalimba, and then we went into a room together, and everyone grabbed random objects in this big studio room we were in, and uh, used them, and we made this whole percussion section, like make so so literally there's stuff on there that. Like, I think I'm smacking a, a ladder. Someone's got one of those, you know, those big uh, water jugs, the big plastic water jugs. Someone's like kicking one of those. Uh, you had like a drumstick and like a, a scrape. Uh you know those metal scraper flat things for drywall? Or no yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I have one of those in a drumstick and I was going, <laughs> like just in carving this drumstick with it. Into a yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like, a, yeah, there's a part where it goes like, or like, and it's like him playing like the yeah. outside the reverb chamber too. Yeah, and there was a reverb chamber in the room, which is basically like it's a room where you open the door and then it just goes up. It's just a small. It's kind of a small room, but it just goes really, really far up, and they have microphones up in in the room, so it just creates its own natural echo. So we just opened that door and came back in the room. And we're like, whoa, this sounds freaking awesome, and. In the end, that's how that song took shape. So, it's a journey. Of the it's a journey. There we go. So some we have another microphone now. Oh, Hooray. third microphone! Yay! <coughs> well, do you guys have a favorite song to perform? Is there one? I mean, maybe you guys don't have the same one. It'd be different for each of us. Yeah, maybe. I was gonna say. That's what makes our band what it is. <laughs> you guys are all clones, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same opinions on everything, right? But but for each of you, then, what is your favorite song to perform? If you had, if you could pick one, or is there, are there a few that stand out? You must pick your set. favorite child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it change it changes definitely. Um, I really enjoy New Dance, all the time. It's just it's a make a new dance up is a really fun song. It's just it it's gets just people fun. going. Gets people gets going. People it reminds dancing. me of like we wrote it to be kind of like, you know, uh, Paul Simon and, and or like like that 80s sound, like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, like those, those songs were the inspiration for that. So it's kind of, it's a kind of song I never thought I'd write, ever. So every time we do right. it, I'm kind of like, I can't believe this. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun song for sure. Uh, we, do a, we do a cover of the Arcade Fire song, Sprawl 2 as well. And and that's just I mean we can't take credit for writing it so but it is a it's really nice playing someone else's song. I was saying this the other day, and we primarily were a band that plays only our own songs. But when we do that, there's always a slight amount of your ego that you're thinking about you know presenting the thing that you wrote to people. And when you're playing someone else's song, if it's a great song, there's like a freedom to like this song. Actually, cue the music for a second. <laughs> Okay, okay, this, oh, is that happening next door? <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's, it's fun to play that tune, too. But yeah, I would say for our songs, I'd say New Dance for me, too, just because it really gets people going and dancing. So, Ash, what do you think? I don't think I can decide. <laughs> it's a hard one. I, oh, I like playing I'm a Heart. I really like that. I've always felt really, like, it, like, pumps me up. It gets me going. We've been playing it um, for a while now, and it's it just hasn't gotten old for me, so I guess that, that makes it my favorite. Sorry, other songs. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Wherever you are. They'll forgive you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know they will. Yeah. Well, okay, as everybody in this room is incredibly well aware, Ashley, you do voice work for this show, this what? cartoon. I do? You do. Um, this is a Care Bear shop. convention, right? This is a Care Bear convention? <laughs> Um, oopsie bear. Th these are a bunch of pet shop boys. No. Oh. <laughs> Is that a thing? It's a horrible joke. I'm sorry. There are fans of the show, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of them, people like that. Well, you play Blythe in Lil's Pet Shop, but you play I Rainbow do. Dash and, Ash and uh, Applejack in uh, My Little Pony. I do. That's right. It's all coming back to me. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do. So, uh, you know, that's obviously got to take up a lot of your outside time. And I was wondering for... Um, well, for you, how do you balance the work you do with voicing, with the touring, the extensive touring you guys have done with, with Hey Ocean? And then for the other band members, I was wondering if you guys have any consuming outside hobbies outside of uh, Hey Ocean or... Well, let's start with you. How do you balance? Okay, um, well, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's definitely tricky because I don't, I don't just do ponies. I do a, a bunch of other um, animated series as well. 
and it can take up a lot of time and uh, it's hard when you know we're touring a lot uh, this last fall we did like a it was like 62 dates across Canada Canada is a big country it's it's like not as populated as the states obviously but it's really quite large in size and to you know drive across it it's takes a while um, and 54, 54 shows in 60 days or something. Anyway, it was a lot of shows. Um, it was heavy, and I had to fly out every s every Sunday night. I flew out, and I did Pet Shop, and I did Ponies on the Monday, and then I'd fly back to meet the boys wherever they were uh, and continue th for the next week. Oh, and sometimes I'd, I'd do a show called Johnny Test as well, and I would do pickups for the Johnny Test on my lunch break, so I would... Like, I'd have to get someone, like a runner from the studio to get me lunch, and it would always be like this crazy, crazy day of just voices. Um, sorry? Okay, someone get this gentleman here lunch, <laughs> please. Um, so yeah, th and it, it really helps because I date a pilot, um, actually, which is really nice. Uh, so that helped. <laughs> He's extremely good looking, too. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, it's a crazy life, but someone's got to do it. So someone's got to do it. I, it's been, it's been e like, it gets easier, I, I think, as it go, as I go along. Yeah. We sometimes, sometimes she okay. gives us hernias because we'll have things booked, and she'll be like, "Actually, I'm on hold for like My Little Ponies a day, and I have to do voice work." And we're like, "Well, we have like a show in this other country." Yeah. And you know, but it's cool because it uh, it always seems to like work its work itself out, and then we also get to through what she does meet wonderful people like you guys, which is really cool. It's we're true. You know, we're here, and uh, you guys are really really sweet. And actually, yeah. the Brony the Brony community I should just say this has been very amazing to our band. So give you guys give you guys a give yourselves a round of applause. You guys have Thanks been guys. wicked to our band, super supportive of what we do. So we yeah. appreciate it. it um, Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say like what I do. Otherwise, okay, yeah, go. You guys have other lives. Yeah, we have other thi we have other things. Um, we don't do voiceover work, but I I me I mean both me and Dave actually work on our own uh, music as well outside of this. Um, I'm working on a a record right now. Dave actually has his own record out, and I don't know if he's gonna plug it. So it's called Cardiography, and it's uh, under his name David Vertesi, and you can you can buy it on iTunes, and it's a really great record. You should check it out. <laughs> uh, uh, plugged. Nice. And uh, what else? I I I uh, I do like a, a rock camp for kids sometimes in the in the summers and stuff. Um, and other than that, just sort of just try and spend my time writing songs. And eating, up. And eating food. I love food. <laughs> love it. Um. I don't know. What do I do? Yeah, music. Lots of music. Um. Yeah, um, we've been involved with uh, an initiative that my uh, my girlfriend and I have been working on that's uh, called Sing It Forward in Vancouver, and we basically mobilized a bunch of our community of bands because there's actually a lot of really awesome music coming out of our city right now in our uh, part of Canada, the west coast of Canada and Vancouver. Um, and a lot of, I think it's like a whole community that's that's been growing up together as bands. And we're all kind of coming of age now and starting to really, um, yeah, make waves or whatever, no pun intended. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, so we've kind of mobilized them in our own community to support uh, an awesome music school um, for kids who can't afford music classes in a pretty um, impoverished area of our city in Vancouver. Yeah, we raised like, I feel like sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars in two years. So that's with two concerts. So it's really, really awesome. It's hard. Like when you're when you're in a band, you spend a lot of time feeling very self-centered, you know, because you're outperforming your own music and pursuing this dream that you have. And um, it's hard to r remember that there are, or it's hard to remember that you are impacting other people's lives with your music. So doing something like this is really nice because you, it's like you see the impact right away and get to help someone and use what, what you can to help other people. Otherwise, I'm really into yo-yo. I'm like an extreme yo-yo. I, I do, yeah. Dude, can you show us? 
Um, <laughs> there right. we go. All right, here we go. Just to premise this, Dave, Dave learned yo-yo on our last tour. We have a lot of downtime on the road when we're not running around and playing and trying to go back to Vancouver to record series. <laughs> but Dave, yeah, Dave learned music? this. You just listen dun, to the music from next door. Dun, dun, dun. Let it guide you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 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 there's no limits. Yo, 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 there's no limits. Yo, 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 yo. All right. Very impressive. That was my first ever yo-yo performance, so. Oh, all right. Yeah, I remember, I remember one of your uh, the Seattle show, um, I had a friend uh, message me, email me, say, I have, I have a gift for Hey Ocean, you should come pick it up because I can't go, I'm sick. I go pick it up and it's, I think it's six avocados and a yo-yo. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Something's here I, I just don't understand. That's the name That's of our West new Coast album, thinking. actually. Sorry? Six avocados and a yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I'm actually a tribute band. <laughs> that is my Hey Ocean tribute band. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you mentioned how you're uh, rallying the, the musicians around the local area. Because I noticed uh, Hey Ocean was the first Vancouver band that, that I found uh, through My Little Pony. But I quickly uh, found some others, su such as Said the Whale, Dan Mangan. And man, that Vancouver music scene is just amazing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we feel really lucky to, to be a part of it and to be friends with all those guys. Yeah. How do you think that even happened? Just like th such a tight knit community, you guys collaborate on so many projects. Well, there's a lot of theories about it. <laughs> you know, uh, do tell. I don't know. I, I, it's funny. I was I was uh, at that music school. Um, it's called St. James Music Academy. And I was there the other day, and there were some people sitting around playing, like just playing acoustic guitar and singing songs and singing songs they knew and songs they'd written. And it really just reminded me of ourse <laughs> ourselves in this weird way, like, you know, eight years ago, seven or eight years ago, sitting around with all those bands you named and a bunch of other ones, and along the way, just sitting in a living room, drinking wine and playing songs for each other. And that's, it's crazy to see that these bands now playing to like thousands and thousands of people and touring the world and uh, everyone's sort of had their own journey everyone's is a little bit different but Vancouver in Canada is just like Toronto and Montreal I think are typically seen as like the cultural hubs and um, I don't know there's something about it just being a young new city I just feel like and we we admire those places and look to Toronto and Montreal Halifax and then of course you know New York LA Paris whatever all the other places awesome music is coming from and try and incorporate that into what we're doing. So you see a lot of different styles. A lot of Vancouver bands, I feel like, kind of try a lot of different genres and incorporate them, in, like kind of like we do. It's like pretty common to see that with Said the Whale or, or Mother Mother or any of those guys. They, they try different things all the time. So I'm not sure. I mean, I really do think that we're all about the same age as bands. We're all like getting into our teen Teen year, teenagers as bands, so I feel like that has something to. We're about to hit the double digits. We're about to hit the double we're digits, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I often tell people that Vancouver now pretty much is a genre. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they all sound, I mean. There's uh, something, I don't know what it is. A similar kind of energy, not maybe the same styles yeah. or anything, but the energy is definitely up there. Somet there's something about it, I don't, I don't know what. It's hard, it's hard to say because people go, there's such a sound, and then they list off a few bands, and I'm but like. And they all really sound really different, but yeah. something about them. It's definitely weird. an energy too. I should say, I mean, my, my experience with the Vancouver music scene, and I've, I've been there a few times, not for very long, but I, I always call Vancouver the biggest little town ever because I I went to the Hey Ocean show last June there, and uh, the next day I was uh, uh, getting some, uh, some poutine, and I ran into uh, We Are The City. The oh, whole sweet. band was there. Yeah. 
And I'm like, I, I, I was standing. I think you were with us. Yeah, yeah. He was with yeah, me. We went and chatted with him for a bit. Yeah, and I said, hey, that's that's the opening act. There's the band. <laughs> you know, it's just it's like every time I've been to Vancouver, and I've only been there I think four times, I always run into somebody there who knows somebody who knows somebody. It just I think it's just the culture there. Yeah. And I I swear we've seen Dave V walking around like three times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like walking like, hey, into a sushi on? place. It's the hood. You're on Main Street. Everyone's. It's a small <laughs> town. At one point, we literally lived th- within a three-block radius of each other. Like, Actually, you're 7-Eleven East 6, and I was 6-Eleven East 7, or vice versa. I forget. It was literally like Ash's house, walk a block, Dave's house, walk a block, my house, or apartments. So, I mean, it, it, like that was kind of a that was kind of an interesting time because it just meant that like. We could be more spontaneous with being like, let's meet up, let's work on something, I'll just come over. And now Dave lives like, <sighs> like you live like 10 minutes away now, or like five <laughs> minutes away. Like that's, it's crazy, it's craziness. Well, you guys kind of hinted at this a little bit earlier, but I, I'll ask the question uh, because I know everybody in this room is curious about it. What do you think the impact? I mean, obviously, okay, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic has this amazing community that's r- sprung up around it. And it's brought in, I mean, in my case, I know for a fact, and I'm, I'm imagining most people here that probably found out about Hey Ocean th- b- through Ashley's connection to it. But in my personal experience, and I know in Austin's, I've talked to him multiple times, you know, we found out about your band through Ashley's connection to the cartoon, but by listening to it, we became fans of the band. Have you found that your concerts have kind of swelled a bit since this whole phenomenon? I I think that became, yes, we have found that, um, especially in the States, less so in Canada, because uh, in Canada we already had like a very established fan base. And we would see some bronies at shows, but it wouldn't nece- they wouldn't necessarily be like an obvious percentage of the crowd. Then we did a big tour in the States, and when we came down, we were just overwhelmed. There were so many people that heard about us through the show and then like s- like stayed for the music. And our, crowds, our crowds are smaller, too, so What's that? our crowds well, are smaller our crowds in the are States. Well, because our crowds are smaller in the States, exactly. We're just starting out. We just, uh, just started touring more extensively in the States than ever, and... Um, yeah, so it's like it's a really nice thing because our last our, f- our first major tour of the states was really successful and I feel like a lo- like a big percentage of it can be it due to the fans we've gained through My Little Pony, so through Ashley's involvement. So yeah, it's cool. And also we we also um saw a large amount of support from the Brony community when we did a Kickstarter campaign for for international touring. Um there's a lot of what's the big what's the big site again the uh, big Equestria uh, Daily yeah. Equestria Daily there are a lot of people that heard of our campaign through Equestria Daily Equestria Daily was super supportive and stuff and then uh, you know we got we got a lot of support for that for our international touring cam- campaign which we raised like forty th- uh, forty five thousand dollars or something for something yeah forty three forty yeah so, so it's 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 really we're all uh, Dave and I don't watch the show but we're uh we're yeah oh right don't admit that publicly um we've got her right here i just act everything out for them i just they they don't watch (laughs) it they just watch me acting it out (laughs) um she tells us all the show secrets anyway so Yeah, well I mean, we already know about the Ninja Turtle crossover and everything, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. Wait a minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think, and and we've said this a couple times in inter- in interviews and when people ask us, like, I think we're more fans of bronies than we are of ponies. Like, <laughs> if that's the best way to put it, it's just really. I think it's a really cool and interesting and diverse community that really supports everyone's creative endeavors and is really supportive um they've been supportive for us and for each other and and that's that's an awesome thing it's like something we we really want to be part of something positive in the world and we try to make our music follow that and so it's it's cool that you know the brony movement which i feel like is is a really positive movement it's a movement about positivity has uh taken a shining to our music as well. I think it makes sense in that in that in that way too. 
So do you guys have a favorite cartoon or two, each of you, that uh, aside from My Little Pony? I mean, obviously it's Ashley's favorite of all time, but no. no. I mean, like, do you guys have a uh, you know, favorite? <laughs> Not <Jeez>. necessarily. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of Adventure Time. And uh, like, I was like really, really obsessed with Ren, Ren and Stimpy back in the day. Um, uh, my my sister and I would record it on um, on our VHS player and watch it a bunch. So I would always imitate their voices. I um, so that that was a big thing for me. And The Simpsons, come on. Um, Devo. Yeah, Looney, t- like straight up old Looney Tunes for me because they make me, they give me like a feeling of uh, nostalgia for being a little kid, you know, so. And they're so funny. They're so funny and like, you know, the music is good and I don't know. I saw I saw an episode of that recently where like Bugs Bunny subbed in for uh, the Roadrunner and just, and you know, the Roadrunner is kind of like, he doesn't ever really do anything to the Wiley Coyote. The Wiley Coyote always does stuff to himself. But Bugs Bunny just manhandles him. It's just like <laughs> dropping safes on him left, right, and center. It was amazing. <laughs> I was I was crying. I was laughing so hard. Um, I watch a lot more cartoons than these guys do, probably. Um, so there's too many to name, really. Well, I love, Adven- I love Adventure Time a lot. Um, what else? We've had some late night adventure time sessions. Yeah, so many. If adventure you know time. I mean. um, uh, I don't know. What what, did we, what were Johnny and I watching on the road for a while? Dave watches a lot of uh, anime in our I, hotel I don't, room. Our drummer actually is really into anime, and, uh, and he's been sort of showing me the way. <laughs> uh, so I started watching all these like original, like really classic animes, and um, like Fist of the North Star and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, we just watched Ninja Scroll. Actually, we just showed our our uh, our guitar player Ninja Scroll. And there was one tour where we literally, like Johnny and I, sat in the back seat of the car with s- headphone splitters, um, and we watched um, uh, S- Space Adventure Cobra. I don't know if you guys watch that. It's like an old, really s- really sexist. <laughs> uh, space adventure cartoon from the 70s <laughs> but it's uh, it's pretty amazing all right so i'm gonna ask one more question while i'm asking that question yes we've got some time for q a as you can see there is a microphone what well, you were looking a little further than pointing <laughs> it's uh, there's a microphone stand right there if you guys could line up if you have questions for the g- these guys on the side over there i think they have questions <laughs> Um, remember that Ashley can't talk about any pony material that hasn't aired yet. Just, just, just as a disclaimer, just a disclaimer. But I'm gonna ask a question that I've heard, you know, in multiple different forums at a lot of different panels, um, and I think it's it's kind of a general important question. But if you have advice for those out there trying to start their own bands or start their own careers, do you have any kind of general philosophical advice that you could give to people who are kind of going out and, well, like as you put it, chasing their dreams? Yeah, I think um, it's important to find people who share the same passion as you. Surrounding yourself with musical people and people that love to express themselves in the way you do is, I mean, I found that and it's helped me tremendously. Um, Yeah, finding people that inspire you to (coughs) be a better musician or play more instruments or just, yeah, write better songs. It's a huge part of it. Yeah, I think if you... um, truly believe in what you're doing just uh you know it takes it takes a certain amount of dedication to what you're doing and just you know be okay with um I guess I don't want to like be negative and say there are failures but like every every little thing that feels like a failure if you push past it it'll it'll um it'll just make you stronger and I feel like um it's not there's no such thing as failure if you if you keep your goals in mind you know like any little hiccups you just learn from them and you keep going so um yeah like patience sort of as Dave was saying it's just being like knowing that it takes time and it takes heart it takes a lot of hard work actually we got great advice from a producer that we worked with um and he just said you know what do, what do you want do you 
you have to know what you want. And if what, if what you want is a career, like a real career in music, or in anything really for that matter, why he was like, well, why would you think that it would take any less time or investment than being a doctor or being a lawyer or being any of those careers, like real careers? He's like, why you should be, you're gonna spend as much money, you're gonna spend twice as much money, twice as much time trying to make this work and, and you should expect that. So just go into it knowing that it doesn't all happen all at once. It doesn't. And, and when, you don't, when you don't feel, when you feel discouraged, this is my sister's advice right now. Think of like, or write a list of like five things that you're grateful for. It's, and it's, this sounds really cheesy, but seriously, it works. It's like a gratitude list completely changes your perspective on everything and then and then you'll you'll be back on you'll be back on track you know so just just rock that we're you, we're also inspirational speakers we uh <laughs> we travel the world uh trying to make people happy so you're selling a series of audio cassettes and well, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yes in in dave's voice like in the lowest register of his baritone voice you can do it you really can <laughs> repeat after me i am special <laughs> All right, well, let's go to the Q&A here. And make sure you speak really into the microphone so it picks it up. Hello. A little bit more. Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, this is a question for all three of you, but mostly to the guys. What was your first unfiltered thought when you heard that there were men 20 and older or that liked to watch My Little Pony? <laughs> I think it's safe that you guys can be honest. I th I thought it was weird for sure, and then um, and and you know s like sometimes I'm still like this is an amazingly odd, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> world of fandom. But at this, you know, so yeah, the first thing was that's weird, and then as you know, as you get to sort of know and understand the community and realize it's m kind of way bigger than the show and way bigger than it's more it's a like. For me, it seems more about a sense of community and a sense of like sharing positivity than anything else. And as soon as like we kind of understood that that was really the dynamic that had been created in the in Burnydom, we just we feel great about it. It's like why not? It's that's totally cool. Whatever whatever brought you together in the first place doesn't really matter as long as you guys are doing good things. That's great. Um, wh is it just for the boys? Isn't it for the boys? Oh, for all of us. Okay. Um, yeah, I was I was uh, pretty surprised. I I have, I have friends that are voice actors that uh, have done a lot of um, panels at they've, they've done cons all over the world for for their work in different um, anime. Uh, so I, I kind of knew what it was about a little bit, but it was also um, yeah pretty surprising. And obviously, you guys are all really uh, cool people, so. I'm I'm uh, I'm all for it. Brody's all the way. Um. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> I was just like, that's really awesomely funny and really weird. But uh, like I yo-yo a lot. So, <laughs> and I grew up as kind of maybe not a Trekkie per se, but I definitely loved. Star Wars, Star Trek, and lots of stuff. Uh, like I, you know, and like I said, I watch watch anime and things like that. So I just I think it's awesome that people can get together in any with anything that they're doing and be themselves and feel really at home. I think we all have a lot of pressure from society to conform, and any people who aren't conforming, I, I think it's it takes. It takes guts and having a group of people that say, you don't need to conform, just like be yourself and be into what you're into. That's, that's a really positive, awesome thing. So it's really, uh, it was easy for me to, to sort of hop on board. I bought our whole band uh, brony shirts. <laughs> or pony shirts, so. Oh, not Ashley, but we surprised her. Right, cool. um, I guess my question is for David V. Um, I've I'm a big fan of your solo stuff as well. And um, I'm wondering, like, where do you get your inspiration for doing your solo stuff as compared to doing stuff for Hey Ocean? Like, where do you draw the differences? Um, yeah, my solo record is, is, a, r is a real breakup record. This one, 
Um, but I think it's, I don't know. Sometimes you just know it, it comes from a bit more of a, a gut place, I think, sometimes. Although we've been really trying to incorporate that music that we all write um, that is very, very personal m more into the band when possible. Um, I u yeah, I don't know. It just kind of, I've been writing my own music for a long time. Uh, it's what I, when I, I first started on guitar and right away, like, started writing my own music. So I've written since I was, like, 12 or 13. And it's hard to tell, but I think we all know, like, you know, when we're writing something, we're kind of like, sometimes we're like, man, this would be, this is a Hey Ocean thing. Sometimes it's like, this is definitely not a Hey Ocean thing. And then other times you're like, this could be, you know? And, it, and so we bring stuff into the band and try it out. And sometimes it takes shape. So, I mean, that's kind of the, the best way that I, I can answer that. But the album that you know is, is very much from a specific time and, and a set of experiences that I had. Okay. This also goes to Dave, B Dave V. As a bassist myself, I just have to know, who is your favorite bassist other than yourself, and what <laughs> song is your favorite of theirs? Oh, wow. Who's my favorite bass player? Um, I grew up listening... Probably the first bass player I ever really loved was Eric Wilson, who plays in Sublime. That was the first time I like heard a bass player in a band and was like, the bass player is really cool. Um, Victor Wooten is an incredible bass player. Like He's... I've seen him play live, and although that's not necessarily how I play the bass, it's it's really inspiring to see a m a, m a true ma a true master. Um, otherwise, I'll s I'll pro I'm just gonna go ahead and say Cake, the band Cake. They've had a, a couple different bass players, but um, it's they're ama amazing bass parts that get uh, written in a way that they're hooks, but they never step on at other parts of the songs. So they're they're really um, yeah, they're re really appropriate, while well, at the same time being a feature instrument. So it's kind of what I aspire to do in our band. I got a really fun question for Ashley. Um, this is involving two characters she voices. Um, who would win in a, you know, an arm wrestling versus hoof wrestling fight? Rainbow Dash or Blythe from Lou, from my little, uh, 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 let me repeat this. Uh, who will win in an arm versus hoof wrestling match? Rainbow Dash or Blythe from Lewis Pet Shop? Oh, R Rainbow Dash will win for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, you can't beat a hoof. You, you can't. Well, I know that just about every one of your songs tells a story or anything like that. But there's one particular song that uh, has caught my attention just because I, th I think it's such a cool song. It's one off of one of your, one off your first album, The Beatboxer, It Broke My Heart. What's the story behind that one? <laughs> Well, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, I dated a guy that was a beatboxer, and he broke my heart. It's a true story. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was, you know, David's really good at it, beatboxing. I can't do it. Boom. Boom. Yeah, here, you beatbox, go. Really? Okay. So yeah, as you can see, it's super sexy. And this guy was, uh, yeah, he was a, a world-class beatboxing dude. He like went on tour with a band from Vancouver called Swollen Members. Do you guys know, you know who they are? Okay, crazy. Uh, anyway, yeah, and he kind of just strung me along. I was young, I was like 18. Uh, and then, yeah, he just crushed my little heart. So I wrote a song about him. Now we're, now we're friends, actually, it's pretty funny. Um, he actually really wants to be a voice actor. <laughs> He's like always on my ass asking, like, yeah, asking uh, uh, me to help him with his demos and stuff. He's really talented, but yeah, that was sort of just my first, first heartbreak for me. So he's not thank a brony, you for is he? He's not, no, he's <laughs> not a brony. He, he's fascinated by bronies, but he's not one himself. He's not yet a brony. <laughs> no, um, uh, my question is for all three of you. Um, what was your best, uh, your uh, best first experience, or one of your earliest best experiences uh, with uh, with the Brony fandom, um, and uh, possibly, uh, what's your worst? Um, best experience. 
best experience? Uh, er, yeah. Oh, oh, we had a really awesome uh, group of bronies come to a show of ours in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Eastern Canada. Um, and this one guy just like bought us drinks all night. Him and his friends were just like, we, we got you covered. Like they like basically had a tab out for our band and they just, he just kept like, you know, feeding us alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a fun night. Um, and yeah, um, we, oh, there's a, uh, there's a man over here. Named Spike. Yeah, his name's Ed and he's, uh, he's an amazing wood carver and he carved us. Uh, he made brony versions of ourselves. Pon pony sorry, versions. Pony of versions. <laughs> Ponies. Um, With our instruments. Yeah, and um, that was amazing. He brought them to a show we played in New York. So he's a very talented artist. Yeah. yeah. In general, I should say, if you guys don't know, Spike Firemane over here has done tons of that kind of wood carving for all sorts of charity projects, and I'm sure I don't even know what the number is, but you've raised tons of. There you go. He's raised tons of money towards charity. So yeah, he's a great guy. There you go. So look for those in the charity auction. I think also, uh, I'll say like maybe, I want to say Denver. I, I really liked Denver because Denver was weird. We played a show in Denver and down in the States, you have to understand like a lot of our friends bands go down and they come back from tour and they go, there was no one there. Like no one came to our shows. Um, it's really difficult. They've done like four or five tours and they just can't seem to build their fan base. and. Denver's yeah, Denver's really tough, and and we went down and it was like you know we our first really big tour in the states and we get into Denver and it it was like it, there ha I mean I wonder how many there were but there were a lot it was basically all bronies at this show in Denver it was an official brony meetup and uh, and you know like at our show in in Canada if there's hundreds of people or you know you know if there's 700 people and there were 50 bronies, which we haven't even really seen that many in, in Canada, numbers like that. But even if you saw that, that w you, we wouldn't have noticed as much. But when you see like 50 to 75 bronies and that's it in the, in the room, everyone's, no, no, it wasn't that many. It was 7 million. <laughs> but uh, it was a big group and they were all dressed up, full on brony meetup. And we were kind of going, I don't know about this. Like, I don't know if these, you know, because it's weird because you're kind of going, well, maybe they're not here because they like our band. Maybe they're just here because of My Little Pony and Ashley's voiceover work. And in the end, it was so fun. They were an amazing crowd. They knew all the words to like all the songs and sang along the whole time. And it was so awesome to have that experience because you, you really see that they s find out about our band, like you said, you know, through the music. Or sorry, through the show, but stay for the music. So that's... That's really nice. And actually, I was going to say, can I get a show of hands here? I mean, cause I'm going I'm to say this was my experience with Hey Ocean, and I assume this is probably a lot of people's, so just a show of hands. How many people here found out about Hey Ocean because of Ashley Ball but got addicted to the music pretty quickly? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it, it's one of those things where I, w I went to, in my case, I drove up to Thunder Bay to see them in concert the one time because I knew Ashley was going to be there, and I thought, okay, I'll check out what the band is. And I had only really heard, I think, Big Blue Wave. I heard three of their songs and just walked straight over to the table and bought their entire uh, discography because I was like, okay, <laughs> it's that good, you know. So I don't know. Would you guys say Thanks, that's Mike. probably what happened in your case too? Because I think that there might be a public misconception that, well, bronies are only into Hey Ocean because of Ashley. I don't think that's true. I think that, yeah, that may be what gets them, you know, to know about the band, but your music is addicting. <laughs> you should know that. I mean, would you guys agree Thanks, with man. that? Does that sound about right? So, oh, well, my question's for Ashley. I'm a voice actor online, and I do little girl voices. And I was wondering how high your range can go. Oh, are you, we having a voice off right now? Ashley's really competitive. It's part of being an Aries. I just I just had a mental image of like Rainbow Dash and a helium balloon or something. <laughs> Dave can actually talk really high. Both of these guys, you do a really good girl impression. Do it. Come on. <laughs> he calls me sometimes and I don't know who it is. I think it's like someone. Hello? 
Hi, is Ashley there? Is that I'm, weird? I'm a I man. I just talk like this sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Marcel the show. I don't know why, but... And other times I talk like this. But then I talk like this. <laughs> I don't know. The weird thing in our band is that actually, I think Davo is the best person at voices. It's weird. You don't want to say that to these people. <laughs> Uh, first of all, because I'll have to try and prove myself, or maybe which I'll is going to feel I'll say, weird. I'll just, say, I'll just say accents. He's insane at accents. He I can like do doing so accents, many accents. But I'm, I, again, I can't do any because I'll, like, it's, it's just, I'll be like offending one p- type of people <laughs> or something. Texan? No, I can't. I mean, I, can't, I don't do s- regional United States accents, but I can. I mean, Yo. that's just. Come on, babe. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you just want some sweet tea. I'm not going to. No, no, it's cool. Johnny actually, I, our drummer does a good na- like uh, Nashville, Nashville yeah. because he spent some time there. Anyway, the point is, I think Ash does better character voices, but I do a lot of accents. I think being a voice actor takes more than just being able to do cool voices. It's it's like it's a mu- it's it's like acting. You know what I mean? It's like you it is acting. <laughs> I mean, I just mean it takes it takes get you know. There's a lot of d- there's a lot that goes into being able to. You're not just doing a cool voice. You're like bringing something to life and there's a director and a story and stuff so we're really proud of no, Ashley. I still think I still think Davo can do crazier voices but Ashley's way a way better voice voice actor it's a band fight right now just you know yeah it's really awkward Ash is gonna, They're gonna write an later. album about this later <laughs> don't embarrass me in front of the bronies yeah, this one goes out to all three of you. Um, I know the Daves aren't huge bronies, but like during your downtime, would you guys go to more cons or like? Would we go to more cons? Yeah, just just well, like say hi, you know, visit, you know. I uh, like you guys. We kind of have to be invited and like, and then we all, it also has to make sense uh, with what we're doing and stuff schedule wise and and whatnot. So and uh, and you have to understand like our shows are kind of like mini cons now. They're like <laughs> our U.S. shows. Well, they're not. They're not many cons. Our U.S. shows, especially, it's like I said, they're brony meetups. So, even coming here, someone asked me when we were doing the signing earlier. They said, "Like, is this weird?" And strangely enough, it's not at all. It's like we we've met tons and t- we've grown accustomed to it. We've met so many bronies all over the country. So, it's cool to see them all in one place. Um, this one's for all three of you. Uh, I was wondering if y'all have ever entertained the idea of uh, doing collaborative works with bands outside of your genre, so to speak, like with uh, hip hop artists, metal artists, or yeah, anything w- like that. Totally. We, we've collaborated with a hip hop artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a Toronto artist, but he lives in Vancouver named Shad. And he's on our second album. Um, that was really cool to get to collaborate with him. Uh, we d- we had a remix contest and we had some of our songs turned into um, kind of uh, more electronic remixes of yeah. the original version. Um, it would be cool to do more of that. Yeah, uh, Dave, what's that? I said I think two of the top three mixes were Brony uh, mi- mixes. I think one of them was uh, Mando Pony. He got yeah, pretty yeah. high up there, but I mean there were some really good trance remixes of that. Totally. As well. Yeah, we're we're into lots of kind of uh, lots of different music, so we'd be open to collaborating with any anyone really. Fireman. Polka. Hey. Um. Okay. First of all, I got into this fandom because of you guys. I heard you guys first. Okay. So I'm not kidding. He's I a unicorn. He. All right. Um. Because of uh your concert May 21st, 2012, I met this wonderful fandom. Uh, before, I had no friends at all. And now I have a wonderful amount of friends here. Yeah. <laughs> because of your music had inspired me to continue to wood carve. Um, what is your thoughts, you know, what is your feelings towards that, that your music has inspired somebody outside of music to continue to do what they love to do. We were, we were like speechless, man. I mean, when, we, when we met you in the New York, uh, when we talked to you at the New York show, that I was, you know, I was overwhelmed. And like you gave us those beautiful carvings you had made and you told us you continued to carve because, because of that. I mean, 
that's like a really beautiful thing for us to hear. And if if nothing else, that's like um, that's that feels like success to us it, that we've been able to have a positive effect on someone such as yourself. So. Yeah, for your for everyone's information, I flew all the way from Long Island, New York, just to see them. Yeah. Ed, you're Woo! a true fan. We uh, we appreciate you a ton. Thank you so much. How do I follow up on that? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, this is a simple request for Mr. David V. Um, yep. Can you woo my heart with the lowest note that you can hit? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't want to make people poo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll do the second lowest note. Hit me with it. Swoop down to it or something. Yeah, I don't know. I have to figure out what it is. Oh. Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Something like that. Okay. Oh, the, my the, the, my the table was vibrating. Yeah. Have you have you can my uh, my brother's actually an opera singer and he can sing so much lower than I can. Yeah, yeah, because he's trained to do it. He's have trained to sing really low. Have you ever so. heard of Tuvan throat singing? Yeah, yeah. Have you tried it? Um, I'm not challenging you. I'm just saying. I mean, I mean, like it sounds like something you might be able to do. I I don't want to. I mean, I invented it. No, <laughs> no. I, no, yeah, I've never, tr I've never tried, and I think it, it has, a, it has less to do with the range of your voice and like learning to do like yeah. some weird, some trickery. There's trickery involved. There's yes, trickery. Yes, yes, involved. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was just, I was just wondering how y'all got your name. Hey Ocean. Yeah. Hey Ocean came from uh, a day. Me and Ashley, we've been friends for a long time. We were traveling in Costa Rica. Uh, we happened to be in the same little surf town. We were there for like, I don't know, like five weeks. And it, it rained for like three of those weeks. And we were there learning to surf. And basically the ocean was huge and the waves were way too big for us to surf. And um, it was raining. there was red Torrential tide, which is like red tide in the ocean, which like gives you infections if you go in the water. And so we were just like sitting there waiting for the weather to get better and for the, the ocean to chill out a bit so we could jump in and have some fun before the end of our trip. And we were with some friends, and our one friend Nick kind of lost it one day and just went down to the beach and just started yelling at the yeah. water. It was like, hey, ocean! So we all started yelling at it as well, like, why are you so mighty? Hey, ocean! I, I ate a mouthful of sand. We all lost it. We had cabin fever, basically. We had cabin <laughs> fever on the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica. So that's... But we also, like, during that downtime, we, we wrote some songs and stuff, or we started writing what were going to be Hey Ocean songs. So then when we had a gig in Vancouver, they were like, uh, what's your band name, though? And we were like, uh, why don't we just say Hey Ocean? And that, it just made sense to all three of us to say that. Yeah. The rest is history. I guess this, I guess this is for the band as a whole. I'm one of the other ones that got into the band before the show. Uh, and it sort of relates to something said earlier um, about the remix project and whatever. Uh, for background, I was the one that did the chiptune versions of those yeah. songs. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, but has there ever been sort of a piece of your fandom that did a cover of your song of your music that you really enjoyed? Like, would you have a, a top pick? Oh man. Would you say? Um, you just mean like of Hey Ocean fans? Or There's or yes. A Children's Choir. Yeah, that's probably the best. There's actually a part of our YouTube channel that has like there's a whole section of people just covering our music. When we find it on YouTube, we try and just put it into this that stream. But Very but there was I don't know if I've put that on there yet. But that's pro that's probably the craziest one for sure. Yeah, the, the Vancouver Children's Choir did did a cover of our song "I Am a Heart," and it's got a really cool percussive thing going on. And they were like playing. Little, they were hitting the stage with like sticks or something. I don't know. It, it was really cool to hear to hear like a whole group of kids like singing this rejoiceful version of our tune. It's really cool. We should add. We'll add it. We'll add it if it's not up there. Yeah, the ones we've done with Saint ja the Saint James kids too. Yeah, the Saint James kids did some really cool ones. You can you can check them all out online if you want. On 
our YouTube page. Hi. Uh, uh, do you guys have any funny or embarrassing stories from on the road? So many. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know if any of them are appropriate to tell here, though. <laughs> From naked van drives oh to, no. yeah, sometimes we just like, you know, at the beginning we started, we started, there was a while where we we just, it would be summer and we'd be on tour and we would just, just start s sort of being naked in the van <laughs> because it's funny. Not and appropriate. Is that not appropriate? I think Why? It's you're born naked. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're not born with a uh, brony shirt on, you know, y you know, so. I think it started because I think the van so didn't have, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think it started because we didn't have like air conditioning in the That's car. That's true. And so we started, it just, you know, escalated. Also, it's funny seeing your friends naked. I'm sorry, it is. I, I recommend it. <laughs> there, I said it. I'll not talk anymore. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's just like really. Uh, yeah, it's weird. When people ask you, you're just like. It's totally uh, hard to, to remember. We gotta, we gotta make like a list and just. Yeah, we so we can just remember. I don't know. We have fun on the road. Yeah, we, we have a good time. We try and keep it positive. We have a really good group of, of friends. It's always been a, a pretty cool dynamic. Um, what? Come on, there's got to oh. be something. I, I remember one time we went to, uh, there's this really amazing place in Canada. It's called Tim Hortons. Do you guys know about it? They've got a few of them in the States You have now. some in the States. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, well, sometimes, I mean, it's become less and less so over the years because <laughs> donuts are just, they've lost their, their magic. But, I mean, for, for a while, it was kind of like the only place we would stop on the road. Don't you think? It was, it's just kind of, it's always open. It's always like a, a sure bet. The story is, it was just funny. I, th I thought it was really funny at the time. We, like <laughs> oh, <that's> went, so <laughs> we went to the drive-thru. And we were trying to get like, you know, they have a plethora of different baked goods and, you know, all, all kinds of stuff, soups, chilies, whatever you want. And we get to the, you know, intercom and we're trying to order, place our order. We're like, oh, hey, yeah, we want like, you know, three toasted bagels, a bunch of croissants, like six pack of donuts, blah, blah, blah. And the woman on the other side was like, I'm sorry, we only have cookies. <laughs> we're like, wait, what? Well, I'm just trying to, that was really funny for me. She actually sounded like that. And... And we were like, okay. It's a really good impression. Thanks. And we were like, okay, well, wha well, can we get like a coffee? She's like, no, just cookies. We only have cookies. Uh, it was the cookie monster. It was cookie monster. Cookie no, monster. and then we go by and we like see this woman outside with like an, an intercom thing on and a hairnet and like I'm pretty sure she had a beard. <laughs> and she was like, she waved at us. She was having like a smoke outside. Anyway. This was her voice. Hey, sorry, we only have cookies. That that was hilarious. I it, that lasted me a, a while on tour. <laughs> That's about as funny <laughs> as it gets. Tim Hortons. <laughs> I don't know. You think of something better than me. Uh, I can think of things, but they're just so inappropriate. It's weird. That's the thing, really. Next question. Okay, uh, I do have a question, uh, but first um, for Ashley. Didn't know whether to give this to you now or during the signing, but I drew you something. Oh wow! Cool. Yeah. So it's up to you now or whenever. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's Look at that. Cool. Oh, that is cool. It's Apple Dash and Rainbow Jack. Just kidding. <laughs> I know the real names. I know the real names. Thank you. Please don't throw it away. I spent like a whole hour on it. <laughs> Apple Dash is bad? Okay. Okay, uh, question. Um, Whenever you're playing on stage, Ashley, uh, just to change things up, have you ever thought about like singing one of your songs in one in one of your many voices? Have I, have I thought about it? Yeah, you know, just like to change things up. I know. do it in the shower all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But in public, no, 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 never. <laughs> okay, the question is for all of you. If, uh, say, you weren't doing music, uh, what do you think you guys would be doing instead of that? I mean, I know Ashley kind of has, like, this side job or whatever, but... <laughs> can, can I just interject and say, the second you started talking, I thought, this guy should be, like, a baritone or something, and I look at your badge, and what does it say? Baritone. <laughs> it's awesome. Sorry. <laughs> 
guys, what, what do you want to be when you grow up if you're not a musician? If I wasn't doing music, I'd probably do some uh, something in like outdoor rec tourism stuff. I really like the outdoors. I, I feel happier when I get outdoors. So, and I went to school for it actually for outdoor rec management a tourism uh, program years ago. So I would I would try and do that and some maybe internationally so I could learn language because I also love language. Uh, oh, you have a mic. Yeah. Um. I don't, yeah, more music? I don't know. It's it, it, That sounds like a cop-out. I just, yo, yo, yeah, maybe I'd try and be a professional. There are professional, y y like, uh, yo-yo-wers, and it's ridiculous to watch. I don't think I could ever uh, fully achieve that. But, um, yeah, I mean, music in, in all sorts of ways has always interested me, like, um, in the business aspect sure. and the interactive um, online stuff and... and producing and, and playing. So I, I feel like if it wasn't in this form, it would always be in another form. Boring. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I don't want to be like a marine biologist or something. Hey, Th this, that's is, this is for all of y'all. Um, what's your favorite Brony fan fiction, like uh, Fallout Equestria and <laughs> or Double Rainbow? And if you were asked to do it, would you be able to or would you want to? Uh, do music or voice acting for a brony fan fiction? Uh, uh, the only fan fiction thing I've seen and really gotten into is the, uh, I don't even know, the hot, hot diggity, hot dog, do what okay. is that? What, what's I it called? Hot diggity demon. Hot diggity demon. And you that and you shit's saw funny. You s it's yeah, really funny. It's it reminds me of old Ren and, Ren and Stimpy, and it's really twisted and dark. And whoever that guy is, I'd love to meet him because <laughs> he, he seems shows really up messed a few up. Of these. Okay, cool. Max, yeah. she wants to meet you. Um, yes, yeah, so that's that's awesome. Keep it up, dude. <laughs> you guys, have you guys seen any weird no, things? Okay. I if asked, would, if asked, would y'all do like voices or? Or music for a fan fiction, or would you be able to? Uh, if we had time, maybe. You're probably not allowed. I'm probably not allowed. <laughs> yeah, there's some pretty strict restrictions on because uh, you know with with the, the characters Legal are issues, copyrighted, you know. etc. Hasbro owns her vocal. Yeah, cords. Hasbro would come after me. <laughs> all right, we got our last question. Yay! All right, um, Ashley. Um, which of your My Little Pony voices do you find uh, easiest to do? Like, Apple which one comes much more natural? Uh, Applejack is uh, is nicer for me to do because it's closer to like the register that I normally speak in. Rainbow Dash is the, is tricky sometimes because it just gets so high and squeaky and it kind of shreds my vocal cords sometimes. Um, so yeah, I I I'd, I'd say Applejack. It's easier for me. All right, thanks. Take care, guys. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Thanks. All right, everybody. Let's give a big round of applause for Hey Ocean here. <laughs> Dave Beckenham, Ashley Ball, of course, and Dave Vertesi. And you Thanks, guys, guys are going to be playing Thanks, tonight. Guys. So you guys should come back for their concert. If we you've are. never seen them live, they're amazing. And we're doing a signing now, I think. Is that what's happening? <laughs>